Tonight, Andrew Fancher offers a different perspective. Andy? For the last year and a half, the story of COVID-19 has been dire. Grim statistics, tearful interviews, and negative predictions. And while the following story does punctuate tragedy, it puts into perspective where we started and where we are today. In the spring of 2020, New York City was overran by COVID-19. This is how the Big Apple became the epicenter of the world. This is kind of me being critical of the EMS system here, but we're understaffed and we're overworked. Bilal Aslam was an EMT in Brooklyn when the pandemic hit. I'm proud of the work I've done over the last year. We've helped, I mean, countless lives and we've lost countless. New York City reported its first COVID death in mid-March. Three weeks later, it had more cases than all of China. A lot of people are just like in it for the lights and sirens and aren't in it for the patient care. Goldie Landau was a full-time EMT in March of 2020. The hospitals were so crowded. Um, a lot of them were running out of supplies. It was so chaotic. There are beds lining, like literally like lining the hallways. And when the city broke a record number of ambulance calls, the EMS system caved in. And so what we were looking at was we needed sheer manpower to deal with twice the call volume that we normally deal with. In response, New York City called for mutual aid. We heard there was a virus in China, then we hear about Italy, and then it starts coming stateside. Adrian Monroe was a paramedic in West Virginia. He answered New York's call for help. West Virginia for the longest time had zero COVID cases but that's because we were only testing a very, very like small population. Sam Franson was a newly certified EMT on the same ambulance. They had never been to New York. So when we first got there, it was like a war zone, truthfully. Over 250 ambulances and 500 EMS workers were deployed to the epicenter. When help arrived, NYC was averaging 4,000 cases per day. So the first shift we were on was 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. For 31 days, Monroe and Franson provided basic life support across all five boroughs. We could be a block away from a call or we'd be en route to the call and they'd call us off of that one because they needed another truck for another call. The job grew ever more demanding. The CDC was changing its response to what we were supposed to be doing and how we were supposed to be doing it essentially on a daily basis. In the month of April, NYC reported 22,000 casualties. So this picture right here, that is the body storage. It was a feeling of defeat. It was like, we're not going to make it out of this. That morgue truck's full and another one's coming soon. There was a lot. There was a lot of bodies. Most of the bodies I dealt with were alive and not dead, and I prefer to keep it that way. After weeks of federal lockdowns and mask mandates, the first wave came to an end. Did we see a change? Absolutely. Um, was it where we're at now in 2021? No, it wasn't. Through tragedy came unification for a common goal, to help others. But did they make a difference? I like to think of myself as like a cog in the wheel, right? The impact that we make is usually imperceptible to us. I'm somebody with some letters after my name. Nobody really special. Did I make a difference? I don't know. At least I know I tried. You know, I do feel like we made a difference.